there was always this yearning to, to feel a little bit more free. Mm. Right? I think like freedom is the key word here. On the other side of fear is growth. Yeah. That, that the fear, the thing you're scared of the most is the thing you're here to do. The universe loves you like every single person, like it loves us so much that it will not stop, even whether it's this lifetime or the next lifetime, mm -hmm. until you have fully expressed yourself, not being as authentic as I possibly can. I think that's the thing I'd be afraid of the most. Hello and welcome to another podcast. I am really excited to bring on the next guest, somebody that's really dear to my heart that I've known for a number of years. I actually met him in Copang Yang when I first moved here. So we've kind of stayed friends together for a while. And he is a flow coach, which I'm gonna get into that because I really wanna understand what that actually is. And he's also a yoga instructor. His name is Cody and he is from New York. <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke between me and you, right? Kai, like, See if you can guess where he's from. Just say hello. 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 <laughs> Speak a bit more. Oi, mate. All right, mate. That is such the worst English accent, That's mate. From the UK. From the UK, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Cody, you're actually from South Africa, huh? Yeah. I think one of the yeah. most interesting stories you've told me is that you pulled a car, you pulled up in your car once and people at gunpoint, like in South Africa sounds mad. Uh, Can you remember that story you told me about like getting jacked or something for your car? Yes, yeah, yeah, South Africa is filled with a lot of crime. Obviously it has its good points as yeah. well and bad points. Um, but not everyone experiences, but personally, yeah, my family quite a few times we experienced being carjacked or hijacked. Mad. Yeah, and then it, it's, Basically, the, the strategy is you, you drive into your driveway and then two other cars that have been following you for a while will pull up behind you, um, block your exit, get out the car with guns and, uh, and take your stuff or take the car or, yeah, just take your wallet or something. That's yeah. insane, man. I've actually seen things like that on, like, you know, on uh, these reels or YouTube yeah. where people, like, just get jacked. And, like, when you told me that story, I was like, wow, shit, yeah. that's, that's crazy, huh? Yeah, it's, it's, it's sad in a sense because it makes you so numb to it. So, like, even the way that I'm talking about it, it's not like, oh, it's such a sad thing. It's just normal. It's just, it's slightly normalized. Like, you will know someone, if not be someone in South Africa who's had that happen to you. And, again, not to take away from the country because it's a beautiful yeah, country. 100%, yeah, it's just And definitely thing. go visit... <clears throat> but crime is definitely a thing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely not putting a negative on it. I yeah. can't wait to go over there. But I was just like, wow, I can't believe. I suppose that's a great topic to kick straight into it, right? When we when we see the news sometimes and we've had such deep, beautiful conversations, like it can be pretty mad. You don't realize how blessed we are living on Koh Phangan Yang in Thailand, right? Mm, yeah, exactly. I think that was the reason why I left South Africa, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful country. There's a lot of beautiful people there. The culture and diversity is immense. Like it's... It's, it's, that's the thing that I would miss. If there would be something that would, not anything I think would draw me back to South Africa for the reasons I'll say in a moment, but if there's something that I would say South Africa has that not a lot of place has is the amount of diversity culturally mm. uh, is incredible. Like the African cultures, we have 11 different official languages and 11 different tribes wow, that exist in that. that. Super, super diverse and beautiful in that way. Is that why you think your language, your, your accent is so <laughs> screwed? Because yeah. even now, you still do not sound South African to me, yeah. bro. I think you're lying to me. No, you are from it, a, it is a lie this whole it, time. You actually from, should sound like this. This is the South African accent. Is that, see? This is kind of like it. This is like... Bro, you're South African. So Cody's from South Africa, That's everybody. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Um, so go, go back to like, when was that point when you decided to leave South Africa and move to Thailand? Or did you go somewhere else before you got to Thailand? Yeah, lots of places before Thailand. Uh, the decision was, again, just to bring it back to why it was made, was because of the safety. You kind of feel this edge all the time um, for lots of different reasons. And so there was always this yearning to, to feel a little bit more free. Mm. Right? I think like freedom is the key word here. Uh, there was this lack, lack of freedom um, just due to the, the mental pressures. Again, it wasn't always physical, even though you felt it. You know, sometimes you felt physically uh, unable to go outside, even though you can. Like, again, yeah. there's nothing stopping you. Yeah. Um, but from your own beliefs or your own fears, uh, based on previous events that had happened, mm -hmm. like being hijacked or being exposed to criminal activity, you'd be, like, scared to go outside. And you would also, like, profile people in a very... Like, in a, in a way that wasn't, that didn't feel true to me, but you did it from like a survival perspective. Kind of fear in a way, yeah. protecting yourself. Exactly. So you'd look at people and be like, oh, is this person going to 
going to steal from me or is this person going to potentially mug me? Mm. And you had this like radar all the time. You know, it's crazy. I was in Koh Samui just to kind of like butt in there. I was in Koh Samui on the weekend and there's this guy, I know I'm covered in tattoos. He's in the sauna. Yeah. I'm, over, I'm in there with my Mexican mate, Sophie. And we go in there and there's this guy in the sauna and he's literally on his mobile phone in the sauna, which I thought was brilliant. And he's sitting there and he's covered in tattoos. Like it's all over mm. his neck. And I'm just like, oh, he looks like a bit... Started speaking to me and Sophie, the most beautifulest yeah. human being I think I've ever met. He was yeah. so friendly. He was actually from the UK, better British accent than me and you. Damn. And damn, and he was so lovely. It's like, wow, for a split second, like I think we all do it. I judged a book by a cover, <laughs> yeah. even though I'm covered in tattoos. I just thought like he looked like a right rough dude. Yeah. He was so lovely. And, and I love that. I don't know about you. When I know when I see that in myself and I've got something so wrong, mm. I realize mm. how how deluded I can be sometimes. Yeah. Because I'm aware of that. Imagine all the other things that I'm subconsciously like believing which are wrong wrong as well does that make yeah. sense yeah exactly and like i think it's it's also it's not wrong to feel that yeah because it comes from a survival instinct yeah Protecting. it's it's just you trying to protect yourself right mm. so like you see that and that relates to some conception of that in your mind mm. so maybe like i know a bit of your history so you've been around um, people who have been involved in crime and stuff like that. So you, you you would associate having a lot of tattoos or a certain part of his persona yeah. physically with that. And you'd be like, oh, this dude's a bit sketch. I oh, know he's a drug dealer as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does also We did a deal on the way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in coconuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. coconut deal. Um, so it's from a survival perspective, which is like, it's a blessing. Like that's yeah. a gift too, because... In South Africa, it was helpful. Yeah, it does like, help Like it was you. actually helpful. Like yeah. th as as negative as it felt internally, like emotionally and maybe even spiritually. Mm. Like spiritually, it didn't feel like the right thing to do because it, it it hinders your spirit. Mm. It, it, it prevents your spirit from connecting to another spirit or another soul. I was just about to ask you a deep question. What does that mean? What does spirit mean? For people that are like, spirit, what are you on about, mate? And yeah. I'm all into this. What, does, what do you mean, spirit? So spirit... To you. To me, um, and I thought about it a fair bit because I'm always trying to distinguish between spirit and soul. And I feel like spirit is that which is, flows through everything in life. It's, it's the, the pure life essence of life um, that everyone has. Love everyone it. is connected to spirit. It's that which is beyond us and within us and through us. And to define it is kind of difficult even. Um, mm. But it's that, that thing that you connect to. Would when you call you, it energy? Like, or? Uh, even beyond energy because like energy is just energy. It's but it's, it's, it's where energy comes from. It's what energy is. Uh, it's that feeling, we were having a conversation before this about um, like going to church. It's that feeling that you get when you're in those states in church, right? Mm -hmm. Like where you're, you're connected to spirit. It's, it's what all of the, uh, the, the practice is bringing you towards through yoga practice, meditation practice, even, even like surfing mm -hmm. uh, or doing something nature. like rock climbing, being in nature, connecting with another individual. It all brings you closer to spirit being that like divine essence. Yeah. It's maybe a really nice way to define yeah. it. Divine essence. If I actually give it two words as a definition. Just two. Just two. Not one. <laughs> divine <laughs> essence. Um, and then that, that is then represented through your soul. Like that, the and then what's the soul then? So what's the difference between so the, the soul would and the soul? Be, yeah, so the soul would be like your, and again, this is my definition. Yeah, like obviously, story yeah, my story, my narrative around it, yeah. uh, it can be whatever it means to you. Uh, but soul for me means our individual expression of spirit. So like our unique expression of spirit. Mm -hmm. So like for instance, you have a unique expression as Brett. Right, which again is just a label, but whoever you are right now in front mm. of me with your blue eyes and your, your beautiful smile. And that's- Keep going, bro, keep going. <laughs> keep going, keep the compliments coming. <laughs> yeah. Um, sexy chicken legs. <laughs> and that, that's your unique expression of, of, of spirit and that's your soul. That's like that which moves you, you know, yeah. that which like makes you do things like this beautiful podcast or um, do the dancing, which I know you love so much. With and my that, chicken legs. Yeah, which is, with those with funky those chicken, chicken legs. legs that do some dancing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, which I love because then your spirit is your spirit and then you're saying your, your soul for you is like backflipping, it's your yeah, exactly, surfing, exactly. it's the way that you kind of yeah. Uh, express the express the, what they call it in yoga is it the atman and the brahman the brahman exactly uh, yeah. so like the atman yes. is the soul is that right yes, individual exactly. self and exactly. the brahman is like the, the higher the, the, the higher the power spirit, or the consciousness. Yeah, yeah exactly that that's a good reference actually yeah. Yeah. so it'd be like brahman and atman yeah and to bring it back to like the being in south africa and having that disconnect one your soul feels so like oh i love this i have to like cage myself because i can't be vulnerable right because yeah. souls are very it's a, it's a soft thing. Yeah, gentle. It's gentle, right? 
Um, and, and so you have to kind of keep yourself back a little bit. And then through that, you're not connecting to spirit. Yeah. So you're, you're caging yourself psychologically and for survival instincts, right? Because like you, you don't want to be harmed or you don't want your, your stuff taken. Your stuff. family, your friends, yeah, your exactly. mom, dad, all that. I wrote in the book, uh, the book that we've got coming out, something along the lines of depression is the soul or the spirit in suppression, mm, you know? And when you kind of trap that or suffocate that, mm. that spirit, like I generally, and again, guys, I'm not a doctor or any PhDs. I've got chicken legs and I look smart, but I am not like some kind of like scientist with research. I just use a lot of common sense. Mm. If you feel trapped mm. in a hostile, scary environment, whether it's a prison cell, South Africa or London, or yeah. even in Thailand, and you're like, like homeless and poverty, like it's very hard for that individual maybe to, to grow and express that spirit. So it's just no wonder you feel stuck you feel stagnant or you feel de depressed and yep. disconnected more than anything. Whether you believe in woo-woo, God, mm. spirit, soul, you can call it all these different words, there is something beautiful that we can connect to. And when we're not connecting to it, it's just obvious we're going to feel unhappy, right? We'll eat crap food, we'll stay up late, or we'll commit crime and take drugs. Because I really, I think we've got that hole in the soul. For sure. Void. And, it, and it's even, it's being more, again, I'm also, don't have a PhD in anything, but there's a lot of research that's showing neurologically how this is happening inside of us, that there's, yeah. there's a repression of something, Ooh. right? Obviously, science hasn't got there. Yeah. It's very hard to measure the soul and spirit. But there, these are all the, where you get these, these tips of, right, of like how to cure depression, connect more with people, go out into nature, nature do more, more sport, right, yeah. more movement, which are all the things you've just spoken about as, as an expression of soul. So you can kind of still link it there yeah. and be like, well, science and medicine is still telling you to do the same thing as you would do if you were just listening to someone speak about soul. A couple of handsome guys on a podcast. Talking about soul and spirit. In a black and white t-shirt. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The yin and the yang. The yin and the yang. Quick question then. Do you think science will ever study the spirit and the soul like they study now meditation? Because it's like what they're doing now is phenomenal. Yeah. People a bit more analytical and they need the research. Yeah. Um, it's great. They're like, oh, wow, meditation works. Yeah. People like me and you are a bit more... Oh, that's obvious, you know, I connect yeah. more to my soul. We're a bit more right brain, maybe flowy, which I love yeah. as well. Do you think science will ever one day just um, start studying this stuff, like the spirit, the soul? I think what they will, they will realize that they have always been. Oh, what do you mean? So that the whole time what they've been actually studying, whatever physical phenomena that they've been researching is actually soul and spirit. Bro, goosebumps. I they're already that, really, like, because that's they're, what it is. That's right? what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they're going to be like, oh, let's, I think they'll be like, whoa, what we're studying here is something bigger. It is yeah. part of something bigger. Because I've read, and I don't know how true this is, but I read something like science will tell you that, you know, within every atom and every cell, there is just pure energy wrapped around as a vibration. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. It's great. But they don't know where that energy comes no. from. And I'm just like, hold up a minute. Yeah. There's always a point where science like takes a step back and yeah. is like, we're not sure. Um, Which is difficult for some, like me and you again, yeah. like I'll, I'll do all the yoga stuff and I'll just sit down in nature and I'll feel it. Mm. Which must be difficult for people which are, I've got a friend that's very logical and mm. he needs to research, mm. but he doesn't feel it. And I was literally talking the weekend, there's a difference between reading a study about something yep. than having an experience. Yeah. And I've just always been, and I don't know why, just the way I operate, I've always just had the experience. Yeah. And then people go, oh yeah, the research. I'm like, oh, okay, but I felt it. Does yeah. that make sense? But, but so I understand it's, sometimes I need to try and articulate it a bit better because I'm like, oh, just close your eyes, you'll be fine, yeah. you connect to your soul. And they're like, what? But at the same time, that's all you can really do. Yeah, because I can't do the other. Because you can't, can't do the other. Like, and the point is that you, you can't actually speak about it. Yeah. Like that, that, that thing. Like the Tao. This, this is like the Tao. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's that thing that you can't, you can't quite touch on. And science is going to, it finds this every time, even in like maths equations, um, as analytical as you go, you'll always get to a point where you just can't answer the question. It's like, you know, when you were younger, and I'm sure you did this because you strike me as this type of child, when you just ask why. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm still doing it now. Yeah, yeah, and you just go, why? And I remember doing this incessantly in school. I think I even did this in church a couple of times, and this is where I never got a good answer. And adults would usually just get really frustrated with you, right? They'll just be like, just because, or like stop asking questions. Yeah. But it's also because the why always brings you to a point where all we actually need to do, and this is the thing that I feel like science doesn't do enough, um, and people don't do enough, is we actually just need to be like, curious. I don't know. No. Yeah. Be like, I don't get to the point where it's like, I don't know, but I'm curious. Yeah. But be able to admit that. And it's okay not yeah, to know. To, to, to be like, look, I don't know. Yeah. And that's okay. And the knowing isn't important. It's, it's part of the process. But what's more important is what you just mentioned. Mm. Is, 
is the experience of it. Mm. And I think feeling, the, the feeling of it. And yeah. this, this comes across in like, so many fields, right? Whether it's podcasts and you're trying to be an entrepreneur, or you're trying to like smash it through marketing or you're trying to do fitness or you're trying to do the yogi way, you can know mm. everything, but do nothing. And then you have no experience. Mm. And then the experience is not there. The, the knowledge isn't going, to, isn't going to progress you or bring you closer to soul or spirit. It can help aid you and support you and and it, it's part of the process, but definitely to fulfill the process, there's an experience involved. Yeah, yeah. fascinating, huh? So the knowledge will, will always get to a point of limitation, and at that limitation, it's really exciting because you're like, okay, I know I'm super close to the unknown, which is the best representation of spirits and soul. I think, I think a know. lot of people that be listening to be like, what on earth are you guys on about? Like yeah. that unknown, like if you said that to me 20 years ago, exactly. I'm like, whoa. And I think like that's kind of a where if we're kind of bringing it back to freedom, yes. it's why so many people are stuck, yes. stagnant, suffering and depressed because even though we think we know, like this is how life works, yep. it's a nine till five, we get a job, we get a mortgage, we own a bit of rock spinning in multiple universes which you never own anything and it becomes so, oh, it gives me a bit of uh, security. Mm. It gives me a bit of safety but the mm. truth is that's actually, it's just full security, mm -hmm. full safety and that's why there will always be this underlying undercurrent of, you know, like disconnection, I believe. Exactly. When you go into this unknown, which is such a power, uh, you know, counterintuitive, yeah. you know, like you walk into a coffee shop, we've all probably done it, and you just push the door and the coffee shop doesn't move, the door doesn't move and you just do like, and it says a massive sign, it says pull. Yeah. You know, to me, it's like so counterintuitive to let go and be in that unknown mm. that we, if we have some kind of structure, if we have our routines, we think then, oh, we know it and this is what I'm meant to be doing with my life. But from, in my mind, I'm like, wow, that is so the opposite yeah. to connecting to your spirit or to your soul. It's like being comfortable in the unknown, being yes. comfortable. I haven't got a clue what I'm exactly. doing with this podcast. Yeah. I haven't got a clue what my purpose in life, yeah. but I just feel good and I'm having fun and I'm just going to keep on doing it until I stop breathing. Yeah. And then like being comfortable in that, I think is such a scary f thing for some people so sometimes, scary. right? Yeah. Like I know a lot of family and friends that need that structure. For sure. And I'm, me, I'm like, oh, I shiver at that. I'm like, oh, I just don't want, I want to be free. Yeah. Which comes back to like, Back to you leaving, uh, we kind of went off on a tangent, South Africa. You didn't come straight to Thailand. You, what did, what, what did you do? You got off traveling? Guys, I know you're enjoying the video, but I've got a quick question for you. Are you okay with that monkey mind being a monkey? We've all got this voice inside the head, all voices, filled with self-doubt, criticism, judgment. But most people don't understand how important it is to master that monkey mind. So look, if you've got a monkey mind or a voice that is just busy inside your head and it never seems to shut up, I know exactly how you feel. And thankfully, I found meditation about 20 years ago. And so, I have an amazing opportunity for you. It's the Bodhi Meditation Teacher Training Program. This 10-week program is designed to share with you eight Bodhi meditations. And the amazing thing about these meditations is that they are scientifically proven to help you reduce stress, reduce anxiety, uplift your mood, boost your energy. In other words, create that kind of lifestyle, that energy and that health and that happiness that most people crave. Over the course of 10 weeks, I'm going to be your meditation coach. And at the end of this course, you're going to become a certified Bodhi meditation teacher. That means that you can coach people one-to-one, -one, you can work from anywhere in the world, build online courses, or even teach meditation at yoga retreats or anywhere you decide. So click that link below and together we'll open up your heart so that you wake up feeling positive and literally this buzz for life. The link is below. Now you can get back to your video. Have an amazing day. The thing was, is like I stepped into the unknown, right? Oof. So that was the, the power of knowledge is that you get to know what isn't your path, I guess, or what you're not aligned with. What you doesn't light what, what, you up. Yeah, what doesn't light you up or what you would, I think maybe this is a better way of phrasing it, what you'd rather not experience, mm. right? Because like being in South Africa, I was like, I could experience this for the rest of my life, but I'd rather not. And then it came to this point where I was like, okay, so now I have options. So I have option one, which is, I know. I know, I, I have a vague idea of what life's gonna be like if I stay here, right? Um, and I could pursue that, I could try to progress that also in more directions that I know. But that knowledge was also limiting because mm -hmm. <clears throat> that, that's as far as that's ever gonna take me. Or I can go do something that I have no idea what's gonna happen. And in doing that, you get to break the limitations of your own knowledge of self and what your life can become. Because mm. that's been my biggest journey, which we'll touch on maybe a bit later, but like 
so many things that I do now, I never knew I was going to do. I could never predict it. Yeah, hundred percent. Like if you asked yeah. me, if you asked me, and it's not even that long ago, like eight years ago, nine years ago, do you think you would be a yoga teacher? Even I'd be like, nah, mm. no way. Yeah. Do you think you'd be a yoga teacher trainer? No. Do you think you'd be living on an island? Do you think you'd be driving a motorbike? Even that's a simple one, or surfing. Mm. And I'd be like, no, I don't think I would do that because I'd be limiting. I'd be limiting myself from my own knowledge of like where I was at, grew up in the city. That level of consciousness, right? <clears throat> that level Awareness. of consciousness. Yeah. And so, so what South Africa did in a very beautiful way actually, and what the crime did in a very beautiful way, is it, it made it easy to take that step. It's like, this is not what Exactly, it was yeah. very easy to be like, I definitely don't want that. I'll take anything. Apart from that. I'll take anything other than what's happening right now. I think that's the same for me, mate. The whole prison journey, living mm. on the council state, like it's just, it just wasn't what I wanted. Yeah. So anything could have been better. Exactly. And just for anybody listening at home, like, and I, I do a lot of coaching with people, I think what you're kind of saying there is like, you can't see the door no. or the steps in like five or 10 years. And you don't need to. No. All you need to do is what's right in front of you. Like, what is that first door you need to open? And in my experience, when you open that first door, the universe or whatever you want to call it, law of attraction or just cause and effect, common sense, mm. when you open one door, you're like, oh, wow, I can see a little bit more. There's another door. Mm -hmm. I can, there's another door I can... And then, like, for eight years, you just keep doing it. And you'll never yeah. know... But I don't know about you. It is a million times better than I could ever have imagined. Exactly. When you went through that first door, though, where did you go and was you afraid? Like, was there any doubt? Um, it's interesting. I, did, I never had doubt... And I didn't have fear. Like, very strange things scare me. Um, not, not like the usual thing. Why'd you look at me when you said that? <laughs> <laughs> um, you scare, no, you don't scare me at all. So, like, even doing stuff like this doesn't scare me. Like, I don't get nervous or anything. Um, sharing some vulnerable things. What doesn't scare me, but the things that I, like, I get a bit, I'm even getting squeamish about it now, are things like, this is very weird, but like cream. <laughs> like putting cream on or like sunscreen, which is like... <laughs> I don't know where this is why, going. I know. That's, I, that's why I don't put on sunscreen. And thank goodness my skin can take it. But that's a very weird fear that I have. I have some physical fears too, like sometimes doing the backflips and jumping off of the cliffs and things like that. There's a fear, but it's not even of the thing. It's more fear of like my own capability. Like, can I do it? Yeah. So it's kind of, a, is that like a self-conscious, self It's a self-conscious self thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, am I, am I capable of this? Yeah. So those are my fears. So there wasn't fear or doubt like doing that. Of, of leaving. Of leaving. Where you leave no, I was traveling. more like, yo, let's See go. Ya. I was like, uh, the excitement. Oh, I love that. Pure excitement. There was, yeah. the, my, my fear gland just became an excitement gland. And that's one thing that's always stuck out for me in our friendship and how you've inspired me over the years. We'll go and climb up a, like a, a waterfall or a cliff and you're just like, yeah, just jump. And I'm like, you're having a laugh. Right? My legs are shaking. I've got all the fear. And then you'll just jump. And you're like, go on. And you're always supportive of that. So for me, like there's always a bit of doing the podcast, yeah, you know, yeah. writing a book. There's this not good enough fear, doubt, you know, I never let it stop me. And yeah. I actually use it now as my exactly. friend. So, oh, wow. If you're afraid of that, keep going for it. But, when it comes to something like jumping off of a bloody thing like cliff or something that you tell me to do, like that is to me, it's like that just, I find that insane that you don't get, a, maybe you get the fear or you get a little yeah. heebie-jeebies, but you just go for it and you're so supportive of other people that you can do this. Go for it, Brett. You can do it. You'll be fine. Mm. And that's how I broke my first chicken leg. <laughs> no, no, never happened. <laughs> never happened. Never yeah. broke anything. But at least you're not scared of cream. Yeah, I'm not scared of cream. <laughs> yeah, which I find fascinating because I was never expecting the cream. Yeah, it's the yeah. first thing you've told me about it's the cream. It's very random. But yeah. it's, uh, it's fascinating how we have different fears or different ideas or perceptions yeah. that create this kind of reality that we're going through, right? Yeah, for sure. And and for me, my favorite thing about fear, and I've, there's been quite a few people my favorite have said thing, this. Just let me pull you. My favorite thing about fear. Yeah. That's beautiful to say, right? Yes. Like a lot of people would say that. My favorite thing about yeah, fear. I love fear. Like, I, in a sense, not that I seek the fear, but I very welcome it when it comes. Because, mm. and, and this isn't me saying this. This is definitely something that I've read somewhere. Um, is on the other side of fear is growth. Yeah. That, that the fear, the thing you're scared of the most is the thing you're here to do. It's like Ryan Holiday's book, The Obstacle yes, is the Way. It's like exactly. the hardest thing that you feel like for me yeah. is like writing. It's like yeah. actually that's your biggest thing exactly. you've got to do. Yeah. yeah. Like so that, so like for me, it was even the physical stuff. So like being, being as physical as I am now took a lot of effort. Like from being young, growing up in South Africa, the way that I grew up, it wasn't, I wasn't very physically inclined. Um, and so I went out of my way to push myself and challenge myself physically as much as possible. Uh, and I think I chased that because it was the other stuff came mm. easy for me. Like, to be honest, like writing books and being creative, very easy. Like I can sit and write books and feel confident about the book. 
Um, and doing all of that stuff can come very natural to me. But I think it is part of why I'm here. And there's a part of like publishing a book is is kind of scary in terms of the amount of effort I need to put in. Yeah. So that's like where it's my- It's not got anything about putting yourself out there. Being, exactly. Being, yeah. that being out there, I don't mind. But the, the amount of effort I need to put in to actually publish, that's like my thing to get Your over. Your obstacle. That's my obstacle. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Fascinating. Yeah. So I think that we should follow our fears more and actually look at it in that way as like a flag to be like, if you're scared of something- Go for it. Pay more attention to 100%. that. 100%. And be like, in that is where your next step is going to be. Yeah, 100%. If you're ever lost, just yeah. ask yourself, what am I afraid of? Yeah. And then go do that thing. Or get out your phone and look on the map. <laughs> <laughs> go to Google Maps. Go to Google Maps. <laughs> Google, I'm lost. Where life purpose. Yeah, where's Find. my fear? It's Find. Funny you saying that. I've had, I still have it. I wouldn't say I'm like petrified of it, but put me out in the ocean. Yeah. Like that's the thing that gives me the little, we've been to this little uh, inflatable island. Yeah. And again, you encourage me to do these flips off of it. But there, there's stuff that comes up in my head. I don't know what's under the water, you know, sharks or fish and all this stuff. And so I actually made myself go scuba diving. Mm. And I went to this, it was hilarious. I went to like Malaysia. They took me out on this boat. And somehow I kind of blagged this kind of like last minute kind of getting on this excursion. And everybody else, they had like 100 dives, mm. 50 dives. And he said, how many dives have you done? And I was like, this is my first time, bro. And I, I was bricking it. I was so nervous. And then when he's given us this whole kind of like, I would have thought that means everything's fine, I'm okay. <laughs> he's giving you all these hand signals, right? But that actually means like, I want to go up. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, shit, I need to pay attention. And he said, and if you see the shark, he's fine. And I looked at him and I was expecting him to like, just like laugh. And I looked around, I was like, why is no one like laughing? And he was so deadly serious. And I kid you not, the first thing I saw on my first dive within seconds was this shark. Mm. And I don't know why, it was the most beautifulest mm. thing I've ever seen in my life. And I started swimming towards it. And it was like, it reminded me of a puppy. <laughs> it was like wiggling around and it, it wasn't huge. It was like that big, yeah, yeah. but that was big for me. I'm scared of little fish, right? And it just kind of like wiggled around and like swam off. And I was like, when I came back up after that dive, I was like, can I do it again? Mm. And that's it. And then now I would like, I would go all the time, you know? Yeah. And I absolutely loved it. And I, I find that fascinating because I was so blocked and limited by my mile, the illusion yeah. of this fear that thought that was so, so scary. It turned out to be one of the best things I think I've ever done. I could jump out of a plane all day long and do exactly. like a skydive, but put me under the ocean. That's when I, that's my most vulnerablest. Yeah. Even when I go out surfing on this little yeah. surfboard, I'm still nervous of the water, yeah, right? Yeah. But yeah, so I just find it fascinating. I think what I'm trying to share there is like on the other side of fear is so much more. Like yeah. actually the fear isn't, it's not a scary thing. No, and yeah. I love what you say, just to emphasize what you said, like go towards it. Like yeah. you're going to discover more of you. Yeah. You're going to be free for it. Yeah. You know, it's amazing, right? Yeah, it's very beautiful. Again, like don't seek it, but just allow for it. What are you, what, sorry to bite in, but what are you afraid of right now? Right now? It's Apart from question. me sitting so close to you. <laughs> you got any cream on you? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> that would be a fear. This is a plug. We've got some uh, Cody cream. <laughs> Cody cream. <laughs> Get over your fear of cream with Cody's cream. Brilliant. Um, what am I afraid of right now? I think it's, it's a fear actually that's stuck with me for quite a long time is the fear of not doing what I came here to do. The podcast. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've got 30 minutes um, left, mate. You've nearly yeah. done it. This um, is your purpose. I'm doing it. Fear is gone. Fear is gone. <laughs> Take the cream. Yeah. Uh, on a broader you, perspective, yeah. yeah so, like, I mean, like, in life. So, like, not, not living, like, a fully aligned life or maybe even more not doing the thing that I feel like I, I can do to, to be myself authentically. Mm. Like, not being as authentic as I possibly can. I think that's the thing I'd be afraid of the most. It's a weird fear to have because it's... Uh, I think it's so natural, man. Yeah. There's such a great study that I read. It's like when they interviewed loads of older people in their 90s and stuff like that, and they're literally on their deathbed, mm. and they ask this question, like, what do you regret in life? And it, you've obviously heard it, and yeah, you know, it's yeah. been going around. It's like, we never regretted what we did. We regretted what we didn't, didn't do. do. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. And I feel like that's like, you don't want to get yeah. to the end of life. And like, wow, I had a purpose. So yeah. I could have done this, and you kind of regret it. So yeah. I think it's... I, I definitely get it. I think it's normal. Yeah, and, and it's an interesting one, though, because it's something that you don't have to think about doing. Like, you, I, I feel personally, like, you can't ever not be yourself. Yeah. Like, whatever you're doing. Wherever you, you are. Yeah, you know, wherever you are, whatever obstacles are challenging, whatever things of, like, oh, I should be this person, but I'm not being that person, or I, I could be more courageous, mm. um, or you feel like, I should have taken that path, but I didn't take that path. You're still being you. You're just going through the obstacles. Yeah. So it, it, it's something that comes up for me. That's, I think, that's was kind the, of like that's the thing that comes up, and it's something I have to tell myself consistently. But you are. Like in having these conversations and every person mm. that you meet and 
in, in the smiles you help create and the smiles that, that you have for yourself and your life experience, you're being yourself. Yeah, and you're exactly where you are because exactly. if you're not, you'd be somewhere else. <laughs> exactly, yeah. There's that. Um, do you think that social media then, like in podcasts and, yeah. you know, which I love and we're so inspired, <clears> we have <throat> such great conversations about entrepreneurs and people who inspire us. But on the flip side, you can start comparing yourself, thinking, why haven't I got hundreds of thousands of followers? Why yeah. am I not made my first million? Or why am I not having that relationship? Well, you know, it could be, we compare ourselves with the body. You know, yeah. like, why am I not in this perfect yeah. body? Like, do you feel like we live in a society which kind of in a way, or a system with social media, that actually doesn't help that if we, because I think yeah. that's natural to have that. Very natural. But then yeah. you add on all of these images every day and we're scrolling, like yeah. that's like, whoa. Yeah, I think it does, because it creates comparison. And yeah. it also, um, I do think a lot of people promote this. They promote authenticity and like being yourself, uh, but there's no blueprint to being yourself. And then this is the thing that maybe people think that there is, where it's like, be yourself and this is how to be yourself, mm. right? Being yourself means doing this or doing that. Uh, and then you always have this comparison of like, is, is this me? You know, like, am I uh, like a, an entrepreneur or like a million dollar business empire builder? Or a yoga teacher. Or a yoga teacher, yeah. Himalayas. And you see other people being happy doing that or happy, maybe, maybe not happy, maybe happy. I'm doing little floaty inverted commas for podcast, those people yeah. listening. I've got yeah. my chicken legs out and Cody is doing the inverted commas. Inverted commas. And there's cream on the table. <laughs> Get the cream on. Sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Um, Please watch the video just to make sure we're two <laughs> normal guys Very having normal. a chat. There's no cream. Yeah, there's no cream. There's no cream on the table. Um, and I think that it does perpetuate that. Like it perpetuates this idea of that being myself is someone outside of me. Oh, so, so say that again. Being myself. This is what the society's created. Yeah, society's just, created. Is yeah. Being myself is someone outside of me. But yours going to say. But I'm going to say is being yourself is undoubtedly who you are. Like inside of you. Inside of you. Yeah. Like being yourself is who you are inside of you. And that can only be expressed. Yeah. Like it's an expression. Yeah. You, you, can't, you can't do anything other than express it. You can't design it. You can't strategize for mm. it. You can't build a blueprint around it. You can only just express it. This is why when we talk about writing books, because Cody writes stuff as well and I write books, it's like, you know, there's, a, there's definitely a way to have like five yep. chapters in a book. Yeah. But my story and your story are so unique and so different. Like, exactly. Is that what you're trying to say? Like bring out your story. Bring out your story and in life, because life is your book, right? And, and if that is a tool that helps you express yourself, use it. Yeah. So, like for instance, I think the, there's we're different in the way that we write books. I think because I've seen the way you write, and I, I'm, I'm left-handed. You're right. Right-handed, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm right-handed. By yeah, the way. I've got that I'm wrong. also right-handed. <laughs> uh, you you like to structure your books, like it helps you, right? Yeah. Like it helps you express yourself. Yeah. For me, I feel like it actually limits me because mm. I've tried both. Like I've tried writing with structure and it doesn't give me the, the, the it doesn't feel like I'm expressing myself fully. Yeah. Uh, what I find works best for me is just going zero structure, just smashing it out on a page yeah. and then after refining it and then adding little hints of structure just to make it more understandable. Mm. And that, that's for me the tool that works. Mm. And so I think thinking of these, these blueprints and these things that social media perhaps again, perpetuate or present to us is like, do this and you'll like achieve um, the best life that you've ever wanted. And all you have to do is follow these five easy steps is look at them as tools. And are these tools helping me express myself? Mm. Yes or no? And yeah. sometimes, mate, do these five steps and you'll achieve what I've achieved. It's like, well, I don't want you what exactly. you've achieved. And we get lost up in that's what success exactly. is or that's yeah. what I'm meant to be doing. Yeah. Whereas I love what you're saying, like in a roundabout way, it's like, well, go within yeah. and be yourself from inside. You might not want none of this stuff. Exactly. You might yeah. just want to go and live on a beach or you yeah. might want to go and like, you know, marry someone in, the, in a yeah. city. And like, vice versa. But it's like, what do you want to do yeah. from within? I think if we're living this external reality, this life, which is beautiful and wonderful and amazing, there's so many opportunities, but we're not really coming from inside. Like mm. we just get lost in that, mm. which kind of brings me back to what you're saying. The spirit, when you're saying about expressing yourself, is that what you mean? Expressing, being yourself, yes. expressing yourself is expressing either the individual yes. Atman or the Brahman. Like yeah. you channel that and you, you yeah. express that yeah. and it could be whatever comes out. Exactly. How? Give me some steps on how you would do that. Like for me, it'd be writing, you would be surfing and writing or whatever. It's like somebody's listening at home, you know, they're listening to two handsome guys on this podcast. How do they start being themselves? Where would they start with this? Because if you told me this 15, 20 years, well, 20 years ago, I looked at you think, crazy like what mm. are you on about even if you talked about meditation mm. what would you say to somebody listening at home that's like right at the beginning of their journey like yeah right at the beginning i'd say like right right at the beginning is firstly become aware 
that there is a deeper self. Like not even know what it is, but just have the acknowledgement or awareness that there's a self inside of you, mm. number one. Like it's there. Mm. Like just that's it. Like first step is be like, oh, there is something inside of me. Like there is, there is something deeper in me. That's number one. And then number two would be do things that connect you to that. So do things that bring that out, draw that draw out. Draw that out. And what, then, what would it be for you to draw that so out? So like I think an easy start without going too esoteric too quickly would be just, would be just doing things that you enjoy. Mm. like hobbies and stuff like that. So like for me, doing parkour is one of those things. Writing is one of those things. Having conversations like this is a big one of those things. Um, being out in nature is one of those things. Teaching yoga is one of those things. There's a lot. Some of them are hobbies. Some of them have become professions. Even like cooking food. Like I really enjoy cooking food and that has become something to me that connects me more to myself. Mm. Um, I follow that. That would be like number two is like an easy thing. Number three, and I think you're going to agree full hard with me with this, is start an inward practice. Meditation. Yeah, meditation. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like any, any form of inward practice where you sit and you just go inwards, even mm. if it's journaling, to be yeah. fair. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like anything that just brings fact, your... You've got a great journal coming out with a book, so thanks for that. Plug. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get the Bodhi journal. Bodhi journal. Um, go inward. Start doing inner work instead yeah. of outer work all the time. Go inward and just be with yourself more. And that, I would leave it at that. The, the, the final one I'll add, follow your intuition. Yeah, follow that. I think the intuition yeah. is like, we have language, which I love, and we're having a great podcast, but like there is also an invisible silent language, which yeah. you would call energy or yeah. intuition or gut feeling. Or flow. I, yeah, or flow, which we'll get yeah. into in a moment. I feel that with animals, I feel it with children mm. because they're not so in the, the head stuff. They're just more connected to that innocence and, and that sense of freedom. So I think for me, intuition is your spirit talking to you. Yeah, ooh. And I, I don't know, should I say yeah. again? I think for me, intuition <laughs> is your spirit talking to you. Because I don't know about you, like sometimes I get that gut instinct mm. and I follow it and I'm like, oh my God. Mm. But there's been thousands of times when I've ignored it. Yeah. And then you know, you, it's actually easier to know when you ignore what you're yeah, meant to be doing because yeah. you're like, why did I go out and drink again? Yeah. Why did I like have sex with that person? Or mm. why did I even put that money in there and lost all my money? Mm. Or why did I eat the cake? Why did mm. I have another bottle of wine? Why am I watching like six series of Netflix? Like, mm. you know, and your intuition is like, no, I feel a bit crap. Like mm. I want something. When you listen to it, mm. which I, again, I think it's a way the spirit is trying to talk to you. Like I can't, there's no other way for me to describe it, but life just gets a million times better. Yeah. And we're kind of in a society where we've told not even told, maybe subliminally, and there's just so many distractions going on. Like we just kind of, we've neglected that spirit, that gentleness. Deeply. It's like, whoa. And I think the only way to do that for me is through the meditation, is yep. to sit for a moment. Oh my God, yeah. Remember your goodness. And then maybe it'll start going, well, why don't you make this decision? Why yep. don't you do this, this, and this? And, and then, unfortunately, so many of us have forgotten to trust that inner voice, but mm. we listen to the voice in the head. Yeah. Does that make sense? For sure. And again, like where... For the decisions that aren't based on your intuition, you can think just right now, where do those other decision sources come from? Um, what do you mean? So if you're not baking, basing a decision off of intuition, yeah. you're basing it off from, of something outside of you. Yeah, or from the programming yeah, and the, the conditioning. Which is externalized. Yeah, right? yeah like it's something that's society. Been, it's been, I'm, I'm doing hand movements yeah, yeah. just for podcast people. I'm making my hands go inward towards yeah, the this mic. Yeah, inner guru. Inner, inner stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it's things that are coming externally at you and you've been programmed you've been into you programmed into something so it's not an internal like flourish coming out it's not coming it's out hands it's are from, moving out now yeah. for people <laughs> like, listening. like a flower yeah so it's not from the outward in it's from the inward out that we want to be that's the intuition yeah. and so i feel like that's that's what we need to connect to and so many things draw us out of ourselves right these are the distractions we speak about this yeah. so much and we get distracted so yeah, much yeah, yeah. so often you and i will like sit down at the sauna ask bath and be like man I've been distracted this week. Like yeah, yeah. I've been distracted again. And then we, we get, we remember, we're like, oh, I'm being distracted. I need to, I need to, yeah, I need to come back to, like I need to close my eyes for a little bit, listen. And you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's what I need to be doing. I think that's such a great point. Like, like you do not get from A to Z overnight. Like yeah. the life that we, from South Africa, whenever it was 10 years ago for yeah. me from prison, it's like 20 years ago. Like yeah. the lives we're living now are an absolute dream yeah. for some people, right? Yeah. And, and we've created our own reality yeah. and we love it. But that didn't happen it, overnight. And number one, it wasn't a straight line. No. The Buddha said, you have to come off the path a thousand times to be on the path you realize. And I don't know about you, but when I mess up, yeah. like when I don't listen to my intuition, or when I really see that ego or I get so distracted by scrolling, I'm like, oh my God, it's definitely not where I want to be. Exactly. But actually it's a gift because it reminds me where I want to be and yeah. what path I want to be on. 
Is that something that you do? I know that you work with clients and you do like flow coaching. Yeah. Like what on earth is flow coaching? Uh, so flow coaching, I think it's better to maybe just start with what flow is. And we've touched on it a little bit. Uh, so flow is like a few definitions. I first found flow um, in, a, in a Korean airport, uh, in, in this tiny little airport. It's called Gimhae Airport. And I was going to Japan. And I went to this ti like, tiny airport, very small. Um, and it had an even smaller bookshop in it, tiny. And that, that bookshop had an even smaller English section, like literally a shelf. And some phenomenal synchronicity, which is a part of flow, for me at least, brought that book to be on that shelf. And it just said flow, and I was like, I, I like the word flow. I used it a lot. Um, in hip hop, the word flow is used quite a lot. And in movement, the word flow is used quite a lot. So it enticed me. And I picked up that book and I read it um, for my stay when I was in Japan for a couple of days and continued to read it. And as soon as I started reading it, I was like, this is bringing words to something that I've always felt intuitively. And what it was speaking about was this, this, this state of being, of being in flow. And being in flow is something that we're perhaps in right now, mm. where we, we connect deeply into the present moment. There's not a lot of external thoughts. There's immense focus in that present moment. There's timelessness. We start to lose track of time. You start to feel this connection towards whatever you speak. So like right now, it's the conversation. And there almost becomes this moment where you and I get lost and all that's happening is the conversation. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is what flow is. And it can appear in so many different ways. It can appear in surfing. It can appear in rock climbing. It can appear in writing. It can come. Yoga flow. Yoga, hairdressing. Sex. Sex, for mm -hmm. sure. Like anything that makes you present. And it's a certain type of it. And it's, it's different for each person. Like I don't think I'm going to get into flow cutting hair. But my sister, she's a hairdresser. She gets into flow cutting hair. Did she cut your hair? Not today. Good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one's cut my hair today. Sure, I can tell. Is, yeah, I, that's what I'm trying to get it's at. pure wild. Bro. Please watch the video. It's not that bad. <laughs> they're, they're picturing like some wild man from the jungle. It's, it's, it's slicked back. It looks good. Um, and so that's what flow is uh, from a state perspective. And when I read that book, immediately I was like, oh, and you can follow flow. And flow then became what to me. What do you mean you can follow flow? So almost, almost the same as spirit. So it's kind of like it's the nudging hand of spirit. Do you think they're the same thing then? And we've labeled them differently? Yeah, kind or? of. Okay. I feel like it could be the same okay. thing. Yeah. Um, flow could maybe be a cooler word for okay, it. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cody like word. A little, a little yeah. bit more like modern, following yeah. the flow, following the spirit. Um, and following your flow would be like following your soul and like how your soul is connecting to spirit. Just I love what we're talking about. Again, just to make it a bit practical, like that would be when you feel excited about something exactly. or you feel passionate about some, yes, some yeah. path you do, or something that you're doing, a hobby or exactly. a person you're talking to. Yep. And is that what you're saying? Like exactly, that intuition. that feeling, that intuition. Yeah. And following that exactly. for life. And that's the flow. And so like the flow coaching is more one bringing people more to their authenticity. So like recognizing what is them and what isn't. Because sometimes there can, because we've had this as well, where we'll like get excited about maybe like having a matcha, mm. right? Or, or having a cacao for me. And that's not in my flow, but it's exciting. Like mm. I can be excited about like uh, the idea of getting that dopamine hit from, from drinking the cacao. But that's not me. That's like, I wouldn't say that's me following my intuition. That's me following my, my brain's the chemicals. Brain, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think think what the coaching part of it is, is helping us discern who is self, like what is actually flow, what is actually alignment, what is actually intuition, and what is pre-programmed. Mm. And starting to cut through the pre-programs. Because a lot of the dopamine stuff is pre-programmed. Pre-programmed, you mean belief systems, belief systems viewpoints, opinions, behavior that, systems, actions. Uh, you just do automatically. Exactly. You that's who you are, your identity. Exactly, yeah. Because so that can that. sometimes feel like flow because it's easy to do. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, I just, you know, I just do it. You know, yeah. this is just who I am. But that's not true. Like there, there is, there's a blossom inside of you that wants to express Ooh, itself. Blossom inside, I like that. And, and it, it wants you to do so much more than that. And yeah. it's about figuring out what that feeling feels like because it is very different. That feeling of true intuition. Sometimes it goes beyond rationality. Sometimes it even feels uncomfortable. Yeah, oh, I don't know about you, but yeah, sometimes yeah. you get asked by yourself to do something really uncomfortable. Like for you, I know you, you got into dancing and that was uncomfortable for yeah. you. But you followed your flow because you've always, ever since like I've known you, you've brought me to so many dances. <laughs> I'm not like super into, like I love ecstatic dancing, but not Latin. 
And every, when I think back, every Latin dance that I've ever gone to has be, been because of you. And thank goodness for that, because that's where I met my partner as well. Amazing. And that was flow. So that's like, I, I, you're going to say something, but before that, that's the other level of flow. Is flow is also like synchronicities. Thanks so much for watching our videos and being part of the tribe. We're really here to raise consciousness, ignite your vibration, and help you master this monkey mind. And did you know that science has proven over and over again that one of the fastest ways to reprogram your mind is through positive affirmations and things like these Bodhi beads. They're a set of 108 mala beads that go round in a ring like this, and you practice positive affirmations to reprogram your brain. Science has also proven in a 30-day study that if you say the same affirmation and use a set of beads, then you can literally, neurologically, change the pathways in your brain. Now that means any of those limiting beliefs that you've got around money, around love, around health, you can change them if you repeat a certain affirmation that I am wealthy, I am loved, I am healthy. And that's why we've created a set of eight powerful meditations where you do one meditation every day with me personally for 30 days and you use your beads in your hand and each time you use the affirmation, you roll your thumb and your finger around on these beads. These meditations are videoed or you can download the MP3s, put them on your phone and literally go to bed at night time rolling your Bodhi beads. These Bodhi beads are handmade with love in Thailand by a local family. We ship them free to anywhere in the world and plus we donate 10% of all of our profits to an elephant sanctuary here in Thailand. So click the link below, make sure you sign up right now because we're actually going to give you a 20% discount code. All you need to do when you go to the checkout is type in I love Bodhi and that will give you a 20% discount on your first purchase of Bodhi beads. Have an amazing day. Now you can get back to the video. See you soon. Where these unexplainable events occur, even like us meeting and becoming friends, yeah. which led to so many incredible moments Adventures that we've had. and so much here yeah, now, yeah, right? Yeah, here now, even like partly leading to all of this, like I'm... I've introduced you to Antonio. I, yeah. I, we, we've, you've introduced me to online courses. You, we've expanded each other so much. And it felt like the universe nudged us together. Yeah. Like there's this, this universal hand being like, here, Brett, go, go to this workshop on Copenhagen. And there was another one being like, go to that workshop. And maybe I was like, oh, but I'm tired. Or, but something got me up and was like, no, you, you're going to go do that. Yeah. And I, you followed that. And then that's what leads to these incredible moments. I, I love that, mate. So yeah. that's what flow is. And the coaching part of it is just refining it a bit more. So why, I've got something to say, but there's mm -hmm. another point I want to make. Like, why do people come out of flow? Like, if like, it's, this sounds easy, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, this is obvious. Let's go to flow and have yeah, a great yeah. life. Yeah. You know, drink some coconuts and have a podcast. And mm. it's beautiful. Yeah. And, and I back everything you're saying. But then why are people not in the flow? Like, Because we get distracted. Yeah. Yeah. I think it comes down to what we already spoke about. It's exactly the same thing. We get distracted and there's a culture that, um, encourages distraction. Mm. Like we're surrounded by it. The island's actually not so bad because I mean like living on an island or living anywhere that's not a city, you're not, you're not encouraged to distraction as much until you turn on your phone. Yeah. Right. As soon as you but look just at just as you said that as the first thing I thought was like I don't think it matters what uh, whether you're on an island in Thailand yeah. or whether you're in a city like London, if you've got a mobile phone in your exactly. pocket, like that is that, that is that is distraction yeah. heaven. Your right. attention is Whew. the biggest asset for marketers. Huge. Like they're they're stealing and trying to yeah. get the attention. So that to me is the biggest yeah. distraction. And the phone and like yeah. all the apps on the phone. Yeah. So that's they they want to distract you. And again, I'm not saying there is an agenda. It's just, just it's, the way it is. It's just it's the way just, it is. But, so, but yeah. that you're, what you're saying is that can take us out of the flow. If that takes us out of flow because we start listening external instead of internal. Mm, oh, I love that because I think that is something that I really like. There, there can be a thousand people on podcasts that can yeah. help you change your life. There can be millions of gurus out there. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're your yeah, own guru. Exactly. Like, and a guru is a Sanskrit word for you're a teacher. Yeah. So stop, listen to, to what yourself, yourself is trying oh, to teach response. you. Yeah, yeah, totally, right? And like, I never want to be anybody's teacher or no. guru. I just want to want to say, like, this is what I've done. Yeah. You can do it, but listen to you. And maybe you can just follow that flow. Or Exactly. All we want to do is express ourselves. Yeah. Like, That's the spirit, coming back to the spirit. Exactly. Just wants to express and be free. That's what this is. This is an yeah. expression of you and, and me coming here and being a part of that yeah. expression. And, and, even, in. and even though it gets a bit scary, like we spoke about doing podcasts for years. Yeah. I've been nervous talking in front of cameras and stuff yeah. like that. But now it feels incredible. It's like we're buzzing. We're having fun, hopefully inspiring a couple of people. Exactly. You know, thousands, whatever it goes yeah. to. That is the flow. Sometimes there's fear before flow, right? Sometimes you'll talk yourself out. Most of the time. Yeah, okay. A lot of the time. That's a great 
that's that's a great little paraphrase Take there too. For your next book. Yeah, sometimes there's fear before Full flow. flow. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the time there is. Uh, there's always this moment, and even if it's like a physical flow that you're getting into, like a, a, a strong vinyasa or you're doing like a parkour sequence or you're doing an acrobatic move or you're doing a dance, right? There's like this little like apprehension that comes up and you breathe through it and then you step into flow. Yeah. And then it all disappears. Sometimes the hardest is that first step. The yeah. hardest move is that first step. Mm. And that's the thing that I think a lot of the flow coaching comes around and even a lot of the coaching that you do as well comes around is just helping people make that first step. Yeah, taking the first step. Taping then, the first opening the door opening and then the there's, door. wow, there's a thousand more yeah. doors like could be anywhere and else. And then like flow suggests, momentum occurs. Mm. You take the first step, then you take the second, the third, eventually you're running, you're flying. And then you're not really thinking about it, you're just in the flow. You're just in the flow, you're flowing and then you will hit, you'll probably hit a wall again. Yeah. And you'll get distracted and you'll be like, what am I doing? And back then- Back onto the path. Back onto the path. And that's the there was something that you said earlier. Um, it was something I, I read in a book by Eric Butterworth called Discover the Power Within You. Mm. And it was you mentioned about me going dancing and like there was so much fear going dancing. And the reason why I stuck at it was because I actually said what he says most people say when they limit themselves. And it's something like if, you, if I asked you to come and do some dancing and you say, nah, that's just not me. Mm. And he was saying like that is the biggest limitation mm. because you're just you're brainwashed to think you know who you are. Exactly. So like I don't do it because yeah. if I'm really honest, I don't go dancing because I'm scared of like yeah. it just bring up so much fear, right? Yeah. So then I would justify my story and go, nah, it's just not me. Mm. And his book is like, you don't know who you are. Like you're infinite, you're intelligence, mm. you are this divine mm. power. Mm. So every time you say, no, it's just not me, I'm not into making money, mm. no, I'm not into doing mm. like cooking, mm. no, I'm not into going dancing, whatever your excuse mm. and your story is, like that is your so I would say be so mindful of, and I'm so grateful for meditation and awareness because when I said some, when somebody's like, well, you want to come dancing? I was like, nah, that's not me. And I was like, how is that not you? Yeah. How do you know if you've never tried it? How do you know if you go once and get so scared and go, oh, I'm never going to do that again? Like do it five times and then say, no, nah, actually it isn't me. You know, like try it and try it and try it because that limit is what I believe, believe blocks people from whether you call it a flow, exactly. spirit, or just opening that first door. Like you don't know who you are. Like I actually believe that you're so unlimited, exactly. full of possibilities. Yeah. Don't let that voice in your head say, no, nah, that's not me. I'm not into that. Like yeah. do the opposite. Like refer I don't know who I am and I'm going to try and explore and I'm going to spend a whole lifetime till my last breath finding out who I actually am. And then five years later, you'll find that like so much beauty and so much joy in who you truly are. You'll be a million miles away from the person that was in South Africa or the person that was on a council estate in London, South London. Fascinating. It's great. And what also happens is no matter what flow will come a knocking. Yeah. Like, cause I mean, you'll get so many asks to come dancing, which I'm sure you probably got. Yeah, no, you're right. The universe kind of, kind the universe of keeps putting like, in your face. Dude, you need to be a dancer. Yeah. Or write that bloody book. Yeah, and yeah. Like, oh, no, no, it's and not me. Get, and it'll come up in so many ways. It'll mm. come up like people will be like, oh, you should rarely do a podcast or, oh, you should rarely like, why don't you come dancing with me? Or why don't you do this thing? Flow knocks yeah. and it'll keep knocking because the universe to get a little woo woo for a moment, but I think it's beautiful to say, the universe loves you, like every single person. Like it loves us so much that it will not stop, even, whether it's this lifetime or the next lifetime, mm. until you have fully expressed yourself. Bro, I love that. It'll, I, it'll not stop. Absolutely love that. And I've, I, there's so many times in my life where I'm like, yeah, I've been so nervous about doing things, but it just does, in the end, you've got to do it to shut the universe up. Exactly. Like, it's all right, you're knocking. <laughs> yeah. like you've got a doorbell, yeah. you're ringing me up. I'm just going to yeah, take yeah. the action to shut you up. Yeah, yeah and for then, sure. But then when you do it, then you really discover you. Yeah. Like, oh, actually, it is me. I, yeah. I love it. Yeah. And you feel better. And then it flows. And then there's this momentous, effortless effort that just occurs. Mm. And then that's what happened with the dad, because I've seen it happen with you. It just, it blew up. Like you just went to so many things and there was, it didn't seem like, like obviously there were some internal struggles, but there wasn't like effort. Like you weren't going out of your way to find, all of a sudden the island even became like a dancing mecca for a while. It's insane, mate. Like, like now I'm like, oh my God, it's dancing ever. I was out last night and I'm like, yeah. I'm someone likes to go to bed early and wake up early. I'm out till like 10 o'clock right now. I'm yeah. like, whoa. So yeah, mate, just to wrap this up, this has been beautiful, uh, but just to wrap this up, I feel like what I'm really getting from you is like, yeah, there's fear, yeah, there's discomfort, but then there's also so much on the other side of it. There is so much like flow mm. or spirit actually trying to talk to you. And I love the way you said that the universe loves you. Mm. It, it wants you to grow. It reminds me of when you see a flower trying to grow through concrete. Mm. You know, this flower is just nature. It's just mm. trying to grow to the light. And it's just so much cement and concrete, but you can't stop that flower wow. from growing. And it's like, again, maybe in this lifetime or maybe next time, but whatever that person at home is listening or whatever me and you have got in you, in, in us, like, 
don't die with your music still inside you. Like yeah. the universe wants you to get that out. That's who you are more than anything else. Like the identities that we've been created or we've been brainwashed to believe that we are. So yeah. I love that, mate. Yeah, the universe loves you and it wants you to grow. And yeah. flow is just going to constantly knock until you do it. Exactly. And just to bring it back, because not to leave a, a cliffhanger for the, the listeners. Till the next podcast. Till the next <laughs> podcast. Um, I left South Africa. There's a huge tangent before that. <laughs> because they had too many cream yeah, companies. There was, <laughs> there was too much cream in South Africa. Um, because of the crime, but I left to go to South Korea and, uh, and, and, be, and teach English in South Korea and learn a new language and uh, study Taekwondo and do a bunch of stuff. And then that, that was, I would say that was a big first step of my flow journey. And we'll, we'll have more podcasts together, so there'll be much more explanation it took about us that one story. hour just to get that qu first question. Yeah, out. that first one out the road. <laughs> yeah. Why did you leave South Africa? That's the reason. Um, a, lot, a lot of things happened in that, and that's what brought me here today. Like eight years, nine years later, leaving South Africa, going to South Korea, not knowing what was going to happen, ending up on an island in Thailand. As a yoga instructor. As a yoga, also, I didn't coach. know Copenhagen existed before I yeah. came here. Came to this island, didn't know I was gonna be a yoga teacher trainer, became a yoga teacher trainer. Didn't know I was gonna be involved in like online content creation mm. and course creation, becoming a coach, became that. Didn't know I was gonna drive a motorbike, driving a motorbike. You're really proud of driving a bike, can you, mate? Bro, no, it's, I, I say it, I say it, because <laughs> it's really one of those things where I, yeah, some of the other things I'm like, even becoming a yoga teacher, I'm like, yeah, but driving a motorbike was something I really never thought I would do. It's amazing, man. Um, and Again, not, because like you, you don't know who you are. So like exactly, explore yeah. who you are yeah. and you're riding a motorbike yeah, or for sure. whatever. And, it's, and I'm not saying it from a flex level because it's not about like being able to afford a motorbike. It's actually the ability of driving that I'm speaking yeah. about. Um, I didn't know I'd have the, the ability, experience, the experience like, of driving a motorbike, yeah. Which is like flow because when I'm having a dance, there's yes. so much fear. But when I actually have a moment where I'm not worried about mm, it, yeah. I'm really with a person, whether yeah. it's a man or a woman, yeah. you know, I'm dancing with another soul. Exactly. Like I just feel so free and in the flow. Exactly. And that can be on the motorbike. You're yes. just so free. You're in, it doesn't yeah. matter what the make the motorbike is, how much it costs yes, you. Doesn't. You're just in the motorbike in the moment. And yeah. that, that to me is what I would sum up as like absolute flow. Freedom, and yeah. why can't we live life like that? Exactly. And that, that would be the thing that I'd leave it with is, is one, don't limit yourself to what your flow looks like. Mm. Like flow in everything. Don't, don't, don't let other people or society or your own, mo mainly your own ideas of self limit what your flow looks like you may find out you're a motorbike enthusiast or you yeah. may find out that you're into pottery. That, number you one. might be somebody that invents a cream. <laughs> Dude, maybe <laughs> I just need to spend some more time with cream. Go with the flow. It's bro. where the, it's the fear leads you where you're meant to be, right? <laughs> bro, I've got some cream. Do you want it on the podcast? <laughs> Shall I put some cream that on That scares me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> um, don't limit yourself and then and connect. Like connect inwards, like we've been saying. Uh, the power of knowing thyself is so incredibly moving in one's life. Uh, and all it takes is taking some time to, to self-reflect, to go inward, starting an inner practice and any meditation, yeah. Brett's, mine, anyone you find on- Just Someone you resonate with. Anyone you find on, on YouTube to start it off with again, but then always come back to self. Like don't yeah. let there be a guru. Don't let there be anyone who's your teacher. Let them be teach you but you be your biggest teacher. Yeah, and follow that. And follow that. Yeah, I love that, man. Yeah, and let the flow happen. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Okay, right, so just before we end the podcast, just a couple of like quick fire questions. Um, if you could invent a planet, create a planet, <laughs> right, and you can have any rules or laws on that planet, what would be the first rule or law be? Like everybody has to abide by Cody's, it can't be cream. Yeah. <laughs> it could be anything you want. So just, just tell you the rule or law of the planet? Yeah, so like, like for me, like everybody would just have to be so loving and compassionate if I had mm. my own little planet. I know it's so far out there, but yeah. like, because I feel like that's what I would like this world to be like. Yeah, yeah. I would say, it's a, I, I would want the law to be a paradoxical law. <laughs> well, it's always a paradox with you. Yeah, because I feel like laws and stuff tend to make people want to break laws just, yeah. just for the sake of breaking laws. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. So I would say it would be a law like, you don't have to follow the law. <laughs> that is deep. That would be the law. You don't have to follow it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. And if there's a person at home now that wants to change their life, they want to go on the flow, they want to live in Thailand or leave South Africa, or they just want to stop taking certain drugs or whatever it is, anything, what would be the first step that they would like need to do right now after watching this podcast, after subscribing, after hitting that bell button? <laughs> what would they do right now? Go inward. 
which means? Um, take a moment to sit with yourself, um, journal, meditate, reflect and ask yourself the question, what would I do if there was no one else in the world? Mm. Nice. Cool. Mate, and how can anybody find out about more flow or your books or your coaching? They've got a website you can go and have a look at. Um, yeah, you can check me out on Instagram at Flow Move Live. Uh, also a website called Flow Move Live. So flow underscore move underscore live. Uh, and just follow me there. There'll be a bunch of stuff that like will come up there as I flow. Uh, there might be YouTube stuff. There might be books. There, there'll be a bunch of things. So just follow me, Instagram, on the websites and check that out. Amazing. Cody, thank you so much, mate. Let's get some cream. Beautiful. That's done. Thank you so much, man. It's been a pleasure. Boom. Hello, viewers. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm hoping that you enjoyed it just as much as we enjoyed making it. We love this adventure we're on. We love growing this community and we would love you to actually help us. So I've got a favor to ask you. Make sure that you subscribe below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and turn that notification button on because that actually helps us with the algorithm. In other words, it's gonna help us reach more people and spread this ripple effect. And I really appreciate your time and energy for watching any video. So if you've got any comments or questions or queries, make sure you pop them in the box below. By subscribing, you are going to be one of the first people to know when we release new content. If you really wanna take your journey and your growth to the next level, make sure you watch this next video and have an amazing day. Once again, thank you so much for your time and your energy. See you in the next video.